Hola amigos de Vinos Sin Límites, bienvenidos a otro episodio en las montañas. Aquí estamos en uno de nuestros sitios favoritos, Bareback Mountain. Si les gusta lo que ven, no se olviden de darle like, apachurrar la campanita para que les lleguen notificaciones e inscribirse. Y aquí estoy de nuevo con el chef, Casey Britton. Casey, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm great, thank you for having us. Thank you for coming up again. Thank you for having you all. It's always a pleasure. We always have so much fun, and you cook, you and Frank cook so many delicious things for us. I was thinking to kick off the spring with an unicorn. What do you think about that? We like it much. Sprinkles, unicorns, colors, the whole. And we have this little guy. The little guy right here. Oh, yeah. So this is one of the new wines that we have for the spring. The unicorn, slightly bubbly, as you can see. Cheers. Cheers. And we're kicking off our celebration in the spring with a unicorn wine. And I want you to tell us what you're cooking for us today. Uh, we have to start with a charcuterie board. It's going to have a bunch of different cheeses, which we'll probably go into more later. But it's going to have grapes, fresh fruits, uh, lots of bread on it for. But the it's feature is the uh, jamón, the jamón, yes. So, and it's serrano. We love jamón. We do. And it's, it's salty. So, but this will be very nice to cut some of the salt from that. And the fattiness, the richness of the serrano. Uh, then we're going to make uh, croquettes with the jamón. So, we're going to have like a bechamel, but then you fold in some more cheese, and then you're gonna have the jamón in it, have to spend crispy, and then you're gonna add, like, panko mm -hmm. bread crumb it, or just regular bread crumbs, whichever is handy, and then we're gonna deep fry them. Yum. So, I love croquetas. And then I saw something, we we'll thought about it, with the jamón, a little pickle, and a little mustard, it's like a, a cubano, so a little... Tiny like Cuban sliders yeah, or Cuban something like that? Sorry, put it on the croquette. So a ah. Croquette. You're surprising um, me here yeah, today. Yeah, a, little, a little something different. Uh, and then we're gonna... I keep on eating dessert, so I'm gonna do dessert. It's on my brain. But uh, churro. Because we'll have the fryer on, so we might as well. And it's gonna be kind of the same. It's pas de choux. So, and that's like... You can make cream puffs or eclairs. If you deep fry it, that dough is a chuggle. And then a cinnamon sugar. But I thought we'd do a maple glaze mm. with the uh, jamón and a little crispy jamón on top. Oh, now I'm so hungry. And I think kicking off the festivities with the unicorn that it has its high acidity, but it's very fruity, uh, like us. <laughs> so. Friends, here we are at Bearback Mountain with our host, awesome Frank, the big papa bear. And he's gonna show us how to cut the serrano ham. Enjoy. Thank you for having us. Thanks for coming. So in Spain, um, it takes seven years to apprentice um, to become a master serrano craftsman, is I guess a good word, right? Um, Apparently the most important skill they have is that they can smell the leg and know when it's ready. They cure them from about a year to some two and a half years. It does not have to be refrigerated, it's completely stable and all they use to do this is salt. So most of the flavor comes from whatever this pig was eating when he was running around. And uh, this particular one comes from a region of Spain where the, all they have is oak trees. So this thing has eaten nothing but acorns, right? Um, you, when you start to cut it, you can get, and the, it's, it's funny, they have these at Costco, they have them at Sam's, they have them online, they're delivered anywhere you want, it comes and you assemble the stand, you put the leg on there, and then you invite your friends over so that you can somehow get through it because it's 14 pounds. So, it comes with this really nice knife, and they suggest, and I agree with them, that you cut a large flap at the top that you can then flip over, and it keeps the meat underneath it moist. So you, you really sort of just shave off little bitty slices 
and then they can be eaten on their own, or you can put them on a sandwich with some delicious cheese. As you can see, it's a little bit of a wonky job. What do you like? But it is delicioso. Delicioso. Yes? Taste the acorns. <laughs> yeah. So the rind is a bit tough. So if you get the piece I'm working on right now, for instance, so the I'm gonna go ahead and cut the fat off of it. Oh, is this for the coquettes? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. So just come over here and oh, this is a perfect one. Lose the next one for perfect. Gracias. De nada. So you'll slice these little paper thin pieces off of here. Please. Angel gets one now. Thank you. And then please help yourself. Uh, the chibatas are right here. There's a, a couple of great mustards we'll put out. Um, the cheeses are all fantastic. This mousse is really good. So this is the appetizer course while we cook it together. So enjoy it. And um, yeah, help us get rid of this leg. Jeez, it's a big leg. I will help you. It's good, isn't it? It is really good. Yeah, Thank you. So we had our cheese course, and it was delicious. And now our friend Frank is working on an ensalada, the jamón con melón. See, so it'll have sweet notes from the melon, the juiciness, there'll be the salty sharpness of the ham. Um, and then you, there's also watermelon plus cantaloupe, so if you're able to compare the two, you know the texture's very different because they're actually completely different types of melons. Watermelons are far less dense and grow much quicker. And this is a seedless watermelon, Ooh. which confuses me. How does they make another one? I don't know. Yeah. Probably something very weird that we shouldn't talk about. Have you seen the squares melons? The what? The square. No, they have square melons. They they make square melons. Well, they must feel terrible when they're at school and they feel so different. <laughs> yes. But, you know. That's like PTSD must, from must, the start. Must be hard to be a melon. I'm sure it's difficult, but to be the square melon in the round melon world? Come on. Who's or up for Bobo. that? Bobo <laughs> melon. I mean, that's a pretty tough thing. They need a lot of wine. We had, uh, and we're gonna go back and forth, but we're professionals. We have a canonado de sardinha with the cheeses. We started with the unicorn wine, and for the salad and for the croquetas, we're gonna have a cava because nothing said celebrate with us, like really good bubbles that goes head to head with the fat of the jamon and we're celebrating jamon and we're celebrating us and our big melon ah fantastic there'll be no russian dishes served today <laughs> <laughs>